Well, ladies and gents, it's been like super slow. It's one of those times that you run into every now and then in the car business where there's just not people coming in. You know, it's just the floor traffic is, is way down from what it normally is. I've only talked to seven clients since I made my last video, which was like 10 days ago. Of those seven customers, two of them were on 2021 Tahoes that were just here to check it out, test drives, you know, not even concerned with talking numbers yet, just really wanted to check the vehicle out. One of them was on a 2021 Silverado, specific vehicle that they came in from like an hour away probably would have got that deal didn't realize that that vehicle was already being swapped out to another store so when they got here they test drove it they were excited about it it turns out i couldn't actually sell it because it was a dealership on the way uh, literally that day to pick it up they came within like an hour and, and took that vehicle out of here i did sell one traverse uh last week so that's on the road and i had a lot of customers that were basically looking to get out of their lease early and into a new lease in order to lower their payment. However, with the deals that we have now versus the deals we had then, plus some of these clients still have payments left on their current leases, it's just not in the cards. You know, I got people that are 60, 70, $80 a month more on a new car today than they were on a car three years ago or, or you know, 32 months ago, whatever it may be. I also lost a deal, uh, confirmed that I lost a deal literally just now on this 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe. This is the Tahoe that has those media players in the back that I recently made the video on uh, about how that all works. Um, so I might be able to provide some advice here. I learned something new when it came to this deal, this customer, because a lot of people, because of COVID, went into like a mortgage forbearance program where I guess you didn't have to pay your mortgage for three months. And at the end of that three months, you were responsible for your, your mortgage payments. So you had to pay, I guess, the three months in full. I'm not exactly sure if that's how it worked, but it was supposed to be something to help people out in the beginning of this whole pandemic. This way, you know, they, they alleviated that one bill from, from maybe their monthly costs and they can make it up, you know, hopefully in three months, I guess at that time they figured we'd be, we'd be sort of back to normal. What it wasn't supposed to do is it wasn't supposed to affect your credit. And apparently it does. So even though it's not supposed to affect your credit rating, the banks are still reporting that you're 60, uh, 30, 60, 90 days late on your mortgage. So this customer that was buying this truck unknowingly, uh, their credit score dropped quite a bit. And because it dropped below a certain tier, the lease that we had figured out, which was like 850 a month based on their structure, turned into 975 per month at the at the lower tier, you know, the lower credit tier. So we helped them out a little bit. We got it to like 950, but for a hundred dollars more a month, they decided, you know what, it's not it's just not worth it. Let's look at the traverse. So they looked at the 2021 Traverse, which is what I have here. We priced it up. Uh, they also shopped around, looked at a Hyundai Palisades and some other vehicles. Uh, in doing that, they found a dealership that had one leftover 2020 Traverse. And because it was a leftover, it was cheaper and they ended up going with that vehicle. Another thing I learned in the last week was uh, a very interesting situation, which I want to bring up as well, because maybe somebody watching can just make sure if they do this, that they take, uh, take the proper precautions. I have a girl that came in who had a leased vehicle for a couple months. She just started doing a delivery job for a restaurant or I don't, she said she was doing Uber Eats, but it was just like an actual company. So she was delivering food. She went to one of her first things that day. She double parked her car. She brought the food up to their house. When she turned around, her car was gone, stolen. They ended up finding that car totaled a couple days later. So she called her insurance, went through the whole process. Her insurance is denying paying on the car because technically it wasn't insured for business use for delivery. Now, back 20 years ago, more than that, I delivered pizzas for a guy that ran a Papa John's store as a favor for him for like two months. I never called my insurance to, to think that I would have had to make some sort of a change to my policy to cover the vehicle in that instance. So now this poor girl has a full payoff balance on her Honda lease that she has to come up with. She has to pay it. So she's gonna have to figure something out because the insurance company will not pay it. They had some lawyers involved. It's been going on for like apparently like four months and uh, they're they're losing that that case. They're not gonna win it. The insurance company is not covering that, that car. Um, so just if you're doing any kind of food delivery or delivery of any kind with your vehicle, it makes sense. Make the phone call, put it on record, ask your insurance if you have to do anything additional. Even if it costs a little bit more, it could save you just in case something like this happens. When times get desperate, you gotta do everything you can to try to find a deal. So I have something in the car here that we're gonna use and see if we can find ourselves a deal. 
There we go. All right. <laughs> These are actually astronomy grade binoculars. I bought them for my wife when we first started dating like five, well, ten, nine years ago, ten years ago now. And uh, it's pretty cool at night. You just look at the sky and it just like opens up the sky as far as stars. Really looks cool with the moon. Uh, you can see Jupiter and the four moons of Jupiter. So, I mean, you're not seeing like the colors of Jupiter. You're seeing like a bigger star and then the little stars, what well, look like little stars next to it, but that's the moon. Uh, I brought them today to hopefully take a look at some stuff. We're also want to try to spot the space station. However, uh, with the clouds in the sky, today's really not going to be the day. Plus we just found out rather than closing at 7.30, we're actually going to close at five o'clock. So we're leaving a little bit early today, uh, being today is the day before Thanksgiving. You see any deals out there, Sal? This is bad. We're actually, we can see the people in the office building across the street there. Where did she go? She had a blue coat on. She left. Dude, look at that. Can you get it closer? No, it's as close as it'll go. I'm gonna have to try this at night one day and see if I can actually show you the vision of like the moon and what you actually see. Now that I'm noticing you can put this right on the lens itself. What's down this way? What do you got? What is it, a plane? Remember, we're looking for deals. We're not gonna find a deal on an airplane. <laughs> if I can find it with this. The GoPro doesn't do it justice. It looks a lot closer with the regular eye right. than it does with the GoPro. Because with the regular eye, you can see the color and everything. Where the car lost it? I'm thinking the space station, dude, that we'll be able to actually see what looks like the outline of a space station. Oh, uh, neither. I know. Alien. It's gonna go over. <laughs> it's gonna go over tonight. Here, hang on to that real quick. There's actually a mobile app you can download called the uh, ISS Tracker. So this is it right here, and it'll show you the next time the space station is going to go overhead. So like today at around 5.30, if that's my position there, it's basically going to be in the sky that's looking west. So it's going to be in the sky this way. However, like I said, with the clouds, we're never going to see it. It's cool stuff. I enjoy it. Where's the plane? I need another plane. Maybe you can find some migrating geese. See what, the moon would be cool. Like when you look at the moon with it, it's, it's sharp. There's nothing in the sky though. Anyway, let's find some customers with them. Just got the phone with a customer I'm working a deal on a Traverse. Uh, we've been going back and forth a little bit. We're really at the point he's ready to make a deal. Hopefully we can do it over the phone and then just through email and they'll pick it up when it arrives. It's a Traverse that's inbound. I just need Sal, once Sal comes back, he's not at his desk at the moment, uh, just to see if he can do this number. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it. He's looking for a round sale price, which means we have to drop this by another $847. Uh, right now we're already uh, very aggressive on pricing. so. I'm going to be honest, I don't see it happening, but that's not my decision to make. So what I have to do is I got to try to sell Sal on the fact that we need to put this deal together and hopefully we can. Or like car sales, right? You meet in the middle somewhere, you figure something out. The guy that we were doing the lease on that we sent the, um, the structure over to the other day to like the screenshot. He's trying to be at a $40,000 sale price on this, which means we have to discount $847 further than you already did. Can we do it? It's in stock. It should be here in a couple of days. Right now, I just want a unit because I'm really down from where I would normally be. 
This month is just complete garbage. <laughs> Available sales to the showroom? Available sales? So um, if I can get a unit, yeah, sometimes you get that sale, that unit, it gets you pumped back up, and next thing you know, you're off and running, build a little momentum. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I know. I told you. This one I'll do. Just because it's you. Ooh. All right, so we and gave him some. That is all. And what's that going to bring the payment to? Um, if you're doing the incep inception fees, it really depends if... Uh, at 36 months come out to 391. His best bet will be 27 months, which comes out to 389. All right, cool. I'll call him back. Thanks. All right, ladies and gents, we got a car deal. We're going to write this one up. Subject to, we just got to make one quick correction. He was going to pay all the inceptions up front. Now he wants to actually roll the tax into the payment. So his payment will go up a little bit, but he's going to pay less out of pocket. So, uh, my main man Sal here is going to figure that out for me. We'll write this up, we'll email it over to him, and then hopefully this truck comes in Friday or Saturday and we can get it delivered out before the end of the month. We have another customer. They just came in, they're looking at an Equinox. They were going to buy one about three years ago from us. Uh, however, we couldn't get what they wanted, so he ended up going with a Ford. The car had to be white. Now he's not so uh, particular about color, although we have a white one here. It sounds like he's ready to go. That lease is ending with Ford. So we have a competitive lease rebate. We have uh, a lease ad that he got mailed to him that he's following that structure as far as money down and mileage and all that. So we may be writing two car deals today. Right, maybe three. We still have time, we have till five o'clock. It's 2.05. They seem to be going slow, huh? A little bit. Um, is he rolling anything in? No. When you get these ads and customers come in with this stuff, it's awesome because it literally tells you in the fine print exactly what you have to do to get to this amount. It tells you the vehicle. In this case, it's an LT front wheel drive. He wants all wheel drive. So right off the bat, you know the payment's gonna be higher because it's a more expensive vehicle. You know, it just outlines everything. So you just follow the exact way that the ad does this. It's gonna give you the payment based on the car they picked and it makes it very nice and easy. And it kind of explains where the number came from. So if Sal tells me the payment's 275, it's not like, well, how could it be 275? The ad says 239. Because you went through and you broke it all down and showed him exactly what the ad shows. So where my ad payment was? 269. Well, I was close. Mm -hmm. I have to get this stuff out right in my head these days. All right, cool. Thanks. Let me see what he thinks. Sal. Um, He's, his son's looking for him as well. I feel like I can't close a car deal anymore. Uh, he's fine with the numbers. Everything looks good. He's happy. But he said his son is also looking, so he wanted to compare to what his son got. He wants to do something before the end of the month. His Ford has to be at by December 8th. I asked him if he can save you a little bit extra money. You know, would you want to put something together today? It's the day before Thanksgiving. You know, apply a little bit of pressure. He's like, nah, my son wants to go over what he found. and So, I mean, we can do that anyway. I don't know. I'll just keep taking a shot. This is where it's a touchy situation because if you apply too much pressure, you turn someone off. If you don't apply enough pressure, you may not have written a deal that you could have maybe wrote. For all I know, he could be looking at Ford again and Ford might be cheaper. You know, when the customer has nothing to complain about, or not to complain about, when the customer has nothing to negotiate, when they're happy with everything, it's almost like what's stopping you from doing it? You know, in this case, he just wants to speak to his son or maybe more his son wants to speak to him about the pricing that he got from dealers, maybe from wherever he lives, whatever the case may be. Same out of pocket. All right, cool, thanks. So in a situation like this, to make it a little bit sweeter, Sal just saved him, how much is that? $22? $22 a month. Not bad. Let me let him know. No deal right now in that Equinox. However, I think we have a very good possibility with that one. Uh, the gentleman wanted an Equinox last time, like I said, but we just, the salesman at the time couldn't find what he wanted. This is the vehicle right here, it's in stock. It's the color he wants, it's the package he wants, has all the equipment he wants. So hopefully he just goes over with his son, you know, whatever uh, research his son had done on, uh, on the Equinox and decides to go with us here. He lives right in town. So, um, should be a deal. And that's really how the car business is. You know, one minute you have no deals and you have nothing going on and the next minute you get in front of two customers and you write one deal and you might possibly write a second one very soon.
So listen, everybody have a happy, safe, healthy Thanksgiving.